Um, it's uh, a pleasure again to be with you. How many of you were with me yesterday? Raise your hands if you were at the pre-conference. Uh, several people in the room uh, were and several were not. Um, uh, I, I try my hardest to not repeat myself when I'm uh, doing multiple sessions in, in the same conference. And uh, uh, you're going to see some basic structure from yesterday because <laughs> it seems to me that, that one thing is clear about these three letters that are up there called RTI is that they are revolutionizing the way people are thinking about educating kids in the United Kingdom, uh, in Finland, in Canada, in the United States. Uh, it's very inter <laughs> interesting to me, excuse this, this will go away in a little bit. Um, it's very interesting to me that, that this RTI thing is a way of, 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 of thinking about the way we educate kids that really is taking the globe by storm. Now, when I first saw my first RTI triangle that said all, some, and few on it, um, and that's the way you should uh, maybe educate kids, I took it home to my wife, who's a nursing administrator, and I said, look, Jan, you know, we're so cool in education. We've thought of this way of providing services, universal, strategic, intensive interventions for kids. She said, Steve, that's very nice. I'm glad that you in education figured that out. We've been doing this in medicine for the last 50 or 60 or 100 years. Because tier one is really the preventative things we do for health in medicine. And then tier two are those strategic things we do to help people, hoping that that'll be enough. And then there are these tertiary care hospitals that provide that very intensive care that some people need. And we've been doing that forever. So then I took it to my mental health colleagues uh, in Utah because I was in charge of all the at-risk programs for the state of Utah for 11 years. And I said, look at what we're starting to do in education. It's really cool. And the mental health people said, well, that's really nice, Steve. We've been doing that for 50 years. <laughs> then I took it to my substance abuse prevention uh, uh, colleagues. And I said, well, look at this, it, what, what we're doing in education. They said, yeah, we've been doing this for 50 years. What I think is true is that this is a way of providing services that I think really makes some good sense for kids and for adults as well. And so, so I'm really proud to be a part of this RTI revolution, as I call it. Um, uh, how many of you are a part of the RTI revolution right now where you work? Any of you? A couple of you are, and you're, you're organizing services around this idea, right? Others of you, have you heard those three letters before together or not? How many of you have never heard those three letters before together? Good. That's most of you because um, I'm, I'm, uh, that's the reason why we put this, this idea together to do this keynote, to help people to understand what this idea is. So I'm very, very happy to, to share it with you, and I'm going to show you several examples um, uh, from Canada, from, from the United States as well, that will, uh, I hope, be helpful for you as we go through this keynote. So those three letters, um, uh, you have to spell it this way if you want to be a part of the RTI Revolutionary Army. You have to have a small t, and, and you also, as I said to the group yesterday who, who were with me, you have to have a tattoo that's a triangle <laughs> somewhere on your body. So you have to kind of do that. And, I, should I show them mine? No, no Claire, sa Claire says no. So. Okay, well, leave that for the end, maybe. Yeah, that's, you know, yes, that's, yeah, never mind. I actually don't have one, but that's, but that's, uh, um, but that's, I'm too old for that, but that's, uh, that's the point about RTI. So what I want to do now is take you through a little journey through this RTI land to make sure you understand what this is. I'll show you some websites, um, and again, I'll show you some, <coughs> some models that are being used in several places. So let's get started with this. Um, one of my favorite um, stories that I believe is true, not a myth, um, is this King Arthur story. And I really like the way T.H. White talks about Merlin because Merlin lived backwards, according to T.H. White, through history so that he would be prepared for Arthur. So he knew Einstein and he knew Shakespeare and he knew um, uh, Beethoven and he knew all those people before he got to Arthur so that he could really be wise to be able to help Arthur. So this is what, this is what Merlin says to, to Arthur as he, as he begins this journey with this young man. He says, the best thing for being sad, replied Merlin, beginning to puff and blow, is to learn something. That's the only thing that never fails you. You may grow old and trembling in your anatomies. You may lie awake at night listening to the disorder of your veins. You may miss your only love. You may see the world about you devastated by evil lunatics. Or know that your honor is trampled in the sewers of baser minds. There's only one thing for it then, to learn. And one of the things that I think is really wonderful about this RTI revolution is that it's based on that concept 
that we, are, that we never really know exactly what to do next unless we make decisions based on student outcome data. Now, everyone in this room um, makes decisions occasionally based on data, and you, 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 you uh, all probably think at some level or another that you're scientific in the way that you do your work, right? I'm going, to, I'm going to propose to you that mostly you make your decisions based on another premise, and that is the conditioned paradigm that you got when you were in your pre-service training. Whatever your professors conditioned you to think at that moment affects the way you behave and the way you make decisions now. And it's pretty difficult to move away from that. Would you agree that that's true? Uh, many of you uh, work in, in school systems that have curriculum people, as an example, that are greatly affected by a certain way of thinking about curriculum, a way of teaching reading, as an example. Let me give you an example of that. In the work that I'm doing um, all around um, the United States and in Canada, I've, I've worked a lot with the, with the administrators in Saskatchewan, and it's been fun. Getting to know the Regina School District, that's one of the greatest places in, in, in this continent uh, that, that is doing a, a great job with RTI. But getting to know them, I'm learning that, that um, a lot of them, in Saskatchewan at least, do not believe in, in programs that are in a box. They believe in curricular strategies, in curricular approaches. They believe in, in working with kids in a rather constructivist sort of a way. That's very consistent with what's happening in the United States as well. The problem with that approach is, is not what it appeals to for the adults, but what the effect is of that approach on kids. Because there are some kids who do not learn to read using a constructivist approach. Now, does that matter or not? Or does it matter more that we're going to stay consistent with the paradigm that we were conditioned to believe is true in our pre-service training? Are we going to make decisions based on adult-centered ideas or child-centered ideas is the question. Is that a valid question? Uh, I am amazed at the number of big city school districts that I'm working with right now on RTI, mostly in the United States, that have curriculum people who refuse to change their perspective about what should be taught in terms of reading and how it should be taught, no matter what the results say. And in math, it's not better. Um, uh, one, one, one big city example that, that I did give yesterday was from a, from a city that uses a constructivist approach toward the teaching of math. The math, the, the ma the math folks in, in curriculum in that big city district are not going to change their perspective. Math has to be taught in a constructivist way. Forget about all this numeracy crap. We've got to teach kids how to enjoy the math concept and get into problem solving. They'll pick up the numeracy skills on their own somehow. So the special ed people in that district said, we, we really do want to use, Steve, one of your, one of your Cambium learning uh, interventions that's called TransMath. It's a wonderful thing, and, and, and let's use it. And, and these kids need it. The curriculum people came in from the math department from that district and said, you know what? We have a constructivist view of, of the teaching of math that is inconsistent with that paradigm. We're not going to use this explicit approach toward the teaching of math for these kids who really need it. I don't care how far they are behind, they're going to pick it up somehow. We'll just use our constructivist approach with them and it'll be fine. Now I want to give you that vivid, those vivid examples because that's the way, unfortunately, that we make a lot of decisions about kids. Not based on the data, but based on the way we feel about the way kids should learn, whether or not they learn that way or not. So the RTI revolution is about, about the idea of learning from the data. And changing paradigms is a very difficult thing to do from this adult-centered bias to a student-centered perspective that is based on student outcome. Okay. Um, this is my favorite website about RTI um, in the world. Um, it's like talking about your daughter, however, because um, this is a, I'm on the board of directors for the National Center for Learning Disabilities, and we host this website. Um, it, it was produced with a $2 million grant from the Cisco Foundation. Um, this, this being a, a, a technology sort of a, of a focus kind of a conference. It is a wonderful website. It shows, it really does show that it's, that it's sponsored by, by Cisco. Because uh, when, you do a, when you do an online forum, the lips and the sound move at the same time. You know, it's really a, a nice thing that way. Um, and I, and I want to show you what this is because you're going to see a little bit about what's happening in the world. <coughs> and rather than, than uh, hoping that the internet would, would uh, work from scratch, I already have it up. Here is the, here is the homepage for this rtinetwork.org. 
What's really great about it is, is that it's got that Cisco background for the technology part of it. It's got people who are at, 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 um, advising um, uh, NCLD, the National Center for Learning Disabilities, who are the best and the brightest in the field. Uh, in fact, the three generals of the RTI Revolutionary Army, in my opinion, I'm going to tell you who they are, uh, are all part of our advisory committee. Write down these names. One is Judy Elliott. Judy Elliott, and she is the chief academic officer in the Los Angeles Unified School District. That's 700,000 kids. It's not, you know, like it's a real small place, so that, you know, she has, she has no right to say anything about anything, right? But Judy's one. Uh, the second is a person named Dave Tilly, T-I-L-L-Y, and he is from the Heartland Area Education Agency. So if you Google these names, you're going to find out some more information about RTI easily. And that's in Des Moines, Iowa. And then the third is a man named George Batch, B-A-T-S-C-H-E, B-A-T-S-C-H-E. And George is in charge of all the professional development being done on RTI in the state of Florida. Now, those three help us to be able to create <coughs> what this is. What I want you to notice is, is that if you want to learn about RTI on several levels, like learning about it, getting started, including essential components, connecting with others, professional development, you can do it that way. If you are interested in pre-K RTI, there it is, or elementary, or middle school, or high school, or how do you interact with parents and families, you can look at it that way. So it's cut in two different directions, which is very, very helpful, I think. And so this is a very, very rich website. I don't like to suggest that people um, get involved with um, uh, listserv because of, of how they inundate what we, what we do in our lives, but this is a good one to get involved with. So you can see what's happening with this website. So I'd, I'd strongly urge you to, to get involved with this because it really is wonderful stuff. Um, my purpose is not to go through that website in great detail, but just to let you know what it is. Didn't you like my daughter? Isn't she cute? <laughs> yeah, it's hard to talk about things like that. I wrote a blog stimulus called Let's Get Serious uh, for, for NCLD and for this website. And in that, in that blog stimulus, I was able to vent my spleen a little bit about what I think we're doing in terms of making decisions. And I've just shared a little bit of that with you in the, in the beginning of this keynote. So let's get serious and talk about this, this, this stuff. How do, we, how do we actually succeed with kids? Mark Twain said it beautifully. He said, you know, always do right. This will gratify some people and it will astonish the rest. <laughs> so that's a hint of what we can do, I think. Another hint is to pay attention to what people have said through the years who are great educators. This quote, I want you to notice what year this quote was, was said by Ron Edmonds. And my administrative assistant always puts pictures like this on these, on these uh, slides for me. Looks like our granddaughter. Uh, we have uh, two granddaughters in Houston, um, and grandparenting does make parenting worth it. I want you all to know if you don't have, grand, <laughs> if you don't have grandkids. It's a wonderful thing. Do you know why grandkids and, 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 and grandparents love each other so much? Common enemy. So that's a, was that good? That was a good one, wasn't it? I should have this, I should have this up clear when I'm saying that kind of thing. Yes, exactly. So Ron Edmonds said this in 1982. Understand how long ago that was. These three sentences drive me on. No matter, no matter what time airplanes get in and no matter how little sleep I get, this drives me forward. See what you think. The first sentence says, we can whenever we choose successfully teach all children whose schooling is of interest to us. It's a choice. The second sentence says, we already know more than we need to do it. And uh, Edmund said that in 1982. He didn't say that in 2002 or 2010. The third sentence is really what drives me forward. Whether or not we do it must finally depend on how we feel about the fact that we haven't so far. Isn't it a reflection of how we feel about the fact that we haven't so far when we make decisions to keep using a constructivist approach for math, no matter what the kids need? Doesn't that reflect on how we actually feel about those kids? I think it does. So let's talk about how RTI can help. This is a cartoon done by an adult with learning disabilities. How many of you um, are adults with learning disabilities or know adults with learning disabilities? Raise your hand. Yeah, look at how many people are raising, raising their hands. Um, what I love about being involved with the National Center for Learning Disabilities is that I'm, I'm interacting as a middle-class kid from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania is where I was born, uh, with all these people in New York society.